Inside this massive factory in the Netherlands stands one of the most complex machines ever built. Made by ASML, it costs around $200 million, and without it, NVIDIA, Apple, TSMC, and Intel couldn't make their most advanced chips. But for decades, that throne belonged to Japan. So how did a small, struggling company conquer the world's most strategic tech sector? This is the story of how ASML conquered lithography and why Japan lost it. Optical photolithography began taking shape in the 1950s when Fairchild Semiconductor and other Silicon Valley companies started producing integrated circuits. The technique used ultraviolet light and photo masks to print patterns onto silicon wafers. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, the US dominated every aspect of chip manufacturing. Two companies led the lithography equipment market, GCA Corporation and Perkinelma. This dominance was backed by a powerful ecosystem, top-tier universities like Stanford and MIT, funding from the Department of Defense and growing demand for military-grade technology. This technological monopoly alarmed Japan. In response, its government launched an aggressive strategy. The powerful Ministry of International Trade and Industry, or MITI, gathered the country's leading optics firms and launched the ambitious VLSI project, a collaboration between the government, industry and academia with strong public funding for R&D. The results came quickly. Nikon and Canon, with their expertise in photography optics, began producing advanced lithography machines. Nikon launched its first stepper in 1980, and Canon soon followed. These Japanese machines were more reliable, more precise, and cheaper. Companies like Toshiba and NEC, also chip producers, began purchasing domestically made equipment, reinforcing the local ecosystem. In the early 1980s, the US held 62% of the global lithography market, and Japan had 38%, but that gap disappeared rapidly. In less than a decade, Japan took the lead. By the late 1980s, it controlled more than 80% of the global optical lithography market. Nikon alone held over 70% at certain points. At that time, the world was building chips with Japanese technology, and no one seemed capable of challenging that. While Japan dominated the market with precision and efficiency, a small Dutch company named ASML was quietly preparing to challenge the giants. Founded in 1984 as a joint venture between ASM International and Philips, ASML's mission was to develop next-generation lithography machines that could rival Japan's leadership. But few believed this unknown company could shift the balance of power. Its machines were less precise, less reliable, and technologically inferior to those from Nikon and Canon. Financially, the company struggled in its early years. Mounting losses forced ASM to sell its stake to Philips and two Dutch banks. Yet ASML survived, thanks to ongoing support from Philips. To differentiate itself, ASML embraced international collaboration, something Japanese firms were reluctant to do. It partnered with Germany's Zeiss, a global leader in precision optics. Together, they began developing more advanced lithography systems. By 1995, ASML had captured around 25% of the market. Momentum was building. The turning point came in 2001 with the launch of the TwinScan system, a platform that could produce far more wafers per hour without compromising precision. Nikon and Canon couldn't respond quickly enough. By 2002, ASML had taken half the market. ASML's next breakthrough was immersion lithography, a major shift from earlier techniques. Traditional machines had an air gap between lens and wafer. ASML's innovation filled that gap with water, improving resolution by allowing light to pass through liquid before hitting the wafer. It was the first to commercialize the technique, releasing the TwinScan AT1150i in 2003 and the high volume XT1700i in 2006. These innovations solidified ASML's leadership, but the industry knew immersion was only a temporary fix. The 193 nanometer light used was too large to produce chips below 10 nanometers. That's when the industry turned to the next leap, extreme ultraviolet lithography or EUV. Unlike immersion systems, 
EUV used light at just 13.5 nanometers, enabling far more precise patterns. But it was only possible thanks to heavy investment from TSMC, Intel, and Samsung, who backed ASML for over a decade. Meanwhile, Japanese firms fell behind. Canon never pursued EUV seriously. Nikon tried, but largely gave up after 2011. When ASML finally launched its first commercial EUV machines, the technology gap between it and its rivals had become unbridgeable. It was more than just a technological milestone. EUV solidified ASML's absolute dominance in the lithography market. ASML didn't just build better machines, it built a better way of innovating. As its systems grew more complex, ASML invested heavily in software, embedding millions of lines of code to coordinate nanometer-precise movements. It adopted modern engineering practices early on, while Canon and Nikon focused mainly on optics and hardware, and fell behind. Another key difference was collaboration. ASML partnered globally with Zeiss for Optics, Emec for Research, and chip makers like TSMC and Intel for real-world feedback. Japanese firms, by contrast, remained isolated. Universities and companies rarely worked together, limiting their ability to adapt. Macroeconomic pressures didn't help. The sharp rise of the yen, US trade pressure, and Japan's bubble collapse all hit its tech giants hard. And unlike ASML, Canon and Nikon didn't reinvent themselves or expand globally. In the end, Japan lost not because it lacked talent, but because it stopped evolving. ASML won because it built an ecosystem that embraced change. And in the fast-moving world of semiconductors, it's never just about who's ahead, but who adapts next.